What's up guys, it is 2019 now, so we're gonna talk about last year's favorites and we're just gonna start off with music because I feel like last year was a huge year for indie music, for me at least, and I found a bunch of new artists that I love. So number one I wanna talk about is Ravina, and the craziest story is that, this is, I feel like, very indicative of my life, but I found her on Colors, which is one of my favorite YouTube channels for discovering uh, just musicians and artists, and I basically fangirled on that YouTube video and then I did an episode dedicating my favorite women of color musicians or artists and she happened to see it and then we basically just DM'd and literally that week she was in my apartment laying on my bed while Diego was doing her makeup I vlogged it but I don't know where that footage is it might be my phone so if I have it I'm gonna put it up <laughs> I'm just like I'm like that's why wow this contour is like but anyways, so if you like indie, R&B, just healing soul music, check out Ravina. She's so talented. Beautiful soul inside and out. And my favorite other artists were Still Woozy, Yeek, Claro, and Omar Apollo. Still Woozy is one of those bands that has such a distinct sound. I don't know if they're a band actually. They're probably a band though. Um, but they have one. They have such a distinct sound that it sounds. All their music sounds like their music, but just different variations of it. So, for example, if you guys know like the XX. Um, how do you not know the XX? But anyways, um, like the XX, it's like all their music kind of sounds the same like the same sound, you know it's the XX, but it's always different variations of it. I don't know how bands do this, it's like phenomenal to me, um, but Still Woozy is one of those bands which is more indie and like um, alternative, I don't know. And then Claro is just some really nice, lightweight music. I've been listening to her stuff so much, um, and I use all of these all of these artists I've used throughout my vlogs throughout the year, so if you like my taste in music, in those vlogs you're gonna like these people. Um, but I have quarterly playlists, so summer, fall, winter. We're right now curating winter, so I'm gonna leave those all linked down below because all of these artists are in those uh, playlists. So if you like that, check it out. All right, now we're gonna go into beauty favorites. So I always have super, super chapped lips, and I've tried every single lip product out there, um, from First Aid Beauty to the Bite Beauty, and while those are some of my favorites, like top ranking, this one always takes a cake because I always go back to it. It's cheap and it lasts a really long time it tastes good and it's the most effective in my opinion and this is the Laneige lip sleeping mask it's Korean I got this off Amazon I use this pretty much day and night I don't use it as a huge mask like they tell you to I just use a little bit like a bomb then next I discovered for skincare I discovered the ordinary and I have heard so much about the ordinary but you know a product is good when I keep repurchasing it so this is like my third products from third repurchases of the products from the ordinary and this is the azaleic acid suspension 10% and this is basically just good for rosacea redness acne it is super drying though because it's at such a high concentration so I would recommend using just like literally a dot of it but this is so affordable and this is the ordinary's niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1% and niacinamide is also really good for redness acne um, basically like broken capillaries I believe but these are both so affordable that I just keep repurchasing them because um, these are two ingredients that I look for in my beauty products but typically they're so expensive I was looking into Paula's Choice as well and their niacinamide or acetic acid was like around $37 and I wanted to try it because I've heard amazing things about it but the ordinary is just something that I've heard about I didn't understand the hype but now I get it so I'm giving it a nice little shout again because I try so many products it is rare that I repurchase things because that means that I really liked it and I'm always trying new products because of the nature of this job um yeah, but this is one that I use all of 2017 and my skin was freaking out earlier this year and I was like, what's wrong? So I picked up this, it's the Josie Moran 100% Pure Argan Oil. Now a lot of you have recommended for me to like basically go to Trader Joe's and get just like a pure argan oil. I have yet to do that because all the Trader Joe's I've been to in LA are sold out of that. Maybe everybody else is on that train, but this is really expensive. It's like $40 for argan oil, but um, I definitely need this in the summertime. Oh no, I definitely need this in the winter time because my face is like cracking at the desiccation of all the winter dryness I don't know so I freaking love this stuff so yeah and you can use this pretty much on your hair nails oil 
uh, face, but, but I don't know. You can use it universally, but it's so expensive. I'm only gonna put it on my face. My good friend here on YouTube, her name is Leah Yu. She is a skincare connoisseur, expert, professional, I don't know what you wanna call it, but whatever she recommends, I just go out and buy because she is one of the most knowledgeable people I know on skincare, uh, staying true to her Gemini side. Um, but she actually has a skincare line, so of course I would love it. This is my favorite product from her line. This is the Kayla Luya. It's a skin resurfacing exfoliator with AHA, hyaluronic acid, with vitamin B5, and also the branding is Kale, so of course I have to stand it. This is amazing because I use this like twice a week. I'm still trying to figure out how many times I can use it because I have very sensitive, thin, uh, rosacea prone, acne prone skin, um, and I suffer from like texture and comedonal acne, so um, this has been really helping with the texturing as well. The texturing? It's been helping a lot with the texture as along with my Nyon Beauty Opus Lux blush, which brush, which I wanted to mention in this favorites because I freaking love it, but that'll probably be in my 2019 favorites. So see you next year. But um, I love this product. It is just, it's low pH. It's an exfoliator. It doesn't burn my face. That is so important because I have such sensitive skin. It is far and few, it is few and far in between. Few, far, fa, how do you fucking say this word? Fa, it's few and far between, okay. It's few and far between that I find a new lip product that I absolutely love because lipstick is my favorite beauty product. I, even before I started YouTube, I actively collected so many lipsticks. I don't know why. I think it just transforms the look. It's it's the complete beauty product and accessory. So I just wanted to talk about two lip products that I have loved this year. And this is the Sephora Collection. Um, Sephora Collection. I always say it wrong even though I'm a freaking Sephora Collection ambassador. It's a lip matte cream, I think, but it's pizza proof, latte proof. I did a whole lipstick lookbook on it and the formula is just amazing. Like Kylie Lip Kit Who? I don't even know. Um, this is just like, if I know I'm gonna go out drinking, gonna go eat, gonna go eat some wings and I want my lip color to stay on, I go for these and they're so affordable. The formula is great. It doesn't feel drying and sticky like other matte formulas do because I hate matte Matte lipsticks, which is ironic because these are some of my favorite products. And then on the other side of the spectrum are these hydrating lip gloss sticks. And I freaking love these because they come out as, or they look like a balm, but when you apply them, it comes out as a gloss. And I just have three colors in these and I just love it because it feels both like a chapstick, a lipstick, and a lip gloss all in one. And the color payoff is pretty good for how glossy it comes out, if that makes any sense. Uh, but Marc Jacobs always has amazing high quality beauty products in my opinion. So um, these two are my favorite. Uh, not really necessarily the colors, just the formulas. Okay, let's talk about media favorites. So we're gonna talk about podcasts first. Um, I absolutely loved Oprah Super Soul Sundays and this is a podcast that I actually heard about from my friend Jen and she loved it. It is Oprah Winfrey just having open dialogue with her favorite thought leaders of this generation. So people like Wayne Dyer, Renee Brown, Dr. Renee Brown, even Julia Roberts was on there. So it's been really fun about it. It's so enlightening in the best way. And I actually found out about Michael Pollan through one of Oprah's Super Soul Sundays and so yeah <laughs> actually researched everything about him online first so he had an amazing talk I think at either Google or Facebook about how the food industry just processes all our foods and I'm very interested in what is going into my body both for holistic reasons health reasons and also just because I'm one curious cat so I watched his TED talk it wasn't a TED talk it was just a talk I believe and I sent it to my friends my family and I just wanted my friends to be very cognizant of the things we put into our body and then I ended up jumping the gun and getting the book. I'm still reading through it, but Michael Pollan is just a fascinating character, fascinating person. He's a food journalist. To me, he's been such an important figure in my life during 2018, um, solely because of his intent. His, he doesn't mean to be vegan or plant-based or to uh, you know save the industry or even be healthy. He is just genuinely curious. His intents are so pure and wholesome. And the opposite side of that spectrum, which I feel like is so indicative of my personality, I'm always butting heads with like my hedonism and my asceticism. So I recently went down the Anthony Bourdain rabbit hole and I basically went down this because I'm so fascinated by mental health and mental awareness. And there was a time in our, I think 2018, where a lot of famous celebrities were committing suicide and um, 
Anthony Bourdain had to happen to be one of them along with Kate Spade and I just started googling um, why I don't know what I did I just googled one night about like why Kate Spade or Anthony Bourdain committed suicide and then I ended up on this scholarly article about someone citing every single episode in which he glamorized or idealized suicide and it was like every single episode that he had ever done and when he talked about it so for example he was like oh my god it's so hot in here I just could hang myself if I had to work in this kitchen and I read that article and I found out that he was a very tormented and dark and twisted person and for me that's very intriguing and I always want to know more about the human psyche and, and what we're going through and so um, after and I, I knew what an icon and what ha, what a legend he was because just I just knew his name but I never like when you don't know you just don't know so I had never watched his show I never really gone in so from that scholarly article I started watching a bunch of interviews and then I started watching his show and I the very first show that I watched that he did was actually Hanoi Vietnam and if you guys don't know I actually went there in the beginning of this year and I like to travel like the locals travel I don't do fancy hotels I do Airbnb I stay with locals we only eat local food I tried to stay away from Ubers we only do like public transportation um, we, we rode on the green motorbikes which is like their taxi that's how I like to travel. If I'm staying in a four-star hotel in a third world country, like there is something obviously very wrong there. Like I don't want to travel that way. And so I feel like I was Anthony Bourdaining it the, even long before I knew who Anthony Bourdain was. Um, so I ended up picking up his book and I freaking love it because he's such a phenomenal, articulate, uh, humorous writer. And I don't know, he just seemed, I have like a list of people that I would, like a list of people in all of history that I would love to like sit down and smoke a J with. And Anthony Bourdain is definitely makes that list. So um, yeah, but he totally hates like vegetarianism. He has frequently said in his interviews that he's no Michael Pollan. If you want to know what's healthy, like don't come to him. Um, he struggled with a lot of different drug addictions. I think he was just very punk rock. And um, yeah, so I really like this book and I just wanted to like give a shout to Anthony Bourdain because finding him and like finding his brain um, both both of these guys um, were it was just very like cool for me at the end of the year anyways okay oh another book that I really loved in 2018 was Oprah Winfrey's what I know for sure um, it is just a small short concise book of all the simple truth that she has acquired over the course of her lifetime um, she has so much wisdom and you know she's just she's one of my favorite thought leaders so um, I had to give that one a shout as well another favorite book of mine is also by one of my new favorite photographers and her name is Lauren Greenfield and I have her book which is pretty much like her magnus opus and it's called Generation Wealth and uh, Lauren Greenfield is basically an American photographer who critically analyzed this type of culture and society's obsession with wealth and plastic surgery and so basically that is what her art is and it's so crazy because her art is so contrasting and so beautiful in the sense that it's like got this really orange warm tone and my friend Brandon who's actually a photographer is the one who told me that I would really like her work this is the book that's always on the back of my bookshelf and a lot of people ask me why I have Lil John on the back of it and so this is that book my friend Matt gave this to me for Christmas last year and I never really got to open it until um, my photographer friend who my photographer friend who works at Getty was telling me that I have one of the most amazing books out there this is one of my favorite photos she's ever done and it's basically says Mijanu who was voted best physique at Beverly Hills High School skips class to go to the beach with friends on the annual senior beach day Santa Monica California in 1993 and just the entire vibe and the scene and the coloring and just the entire atmosphere of this photo I just feel like really encompasses so much I really want to watch her documentary that she has um, it's actually ironically produced by Amazon Studios by Jeff Bezos like one of the richest dudes out there but if you've seen it, let me know. I do want to watch it. One of my favorite YouTubers and philosophers is Alain de Botton. I hope I said that right. Um, but he has a YouTube channel called The School of Life where he basically just has these small tidbits of philosophy videos. And I find so much enlightenment and 
knowledge through those videos and I want to read some of his books but when I went to Barnes and Noble they were all sold out so I just love the school of life and if you're someone who really likes to really challenge certain power structures or concepts or the paradigm I feel like this is going to be a good channel for you because it just enlightens you in ways that you didn't know you needed <laughs> last but not least fashion accessories it wasn't 2018 without some art ho earrings I wanted to show you a few of my favorite pairs but you guys know that you can shop my favorite art ho earrings at vagabondyouth.co which is my holiday capsule collection but I'm just gonna show you an overview of all the art ho earrings I can't even organize them because they're just a clusterfuck on my bookshelf these are just some of my favorites um, I only wear gold for whatever reason and then my last favorite are velvet scrunchies this one I actually got from a PR package from glow recipe but I bought a five pack from urban outfitters because I saw to all the boys I've loved before which is one of my favorite films of this year because it was nostalgic, rom-com, 80s-esque, but still very modern. I like the tropes, the character development. Oh my god, so that's actually a favorite. But I saw Laura Jean wear a velvet scrunchie and I bought it just because you know for shits and giggles but actually velvet scrunchies are my favorite because they don't leave a dent in my head and they're able to hold all of my hair and you guys know I have a lot of hair so velvet scrunchies are definitely a 2018 favorite um, but yeah that is pretty much it thank you guys so much for watching my favorites videos and or video because I don't really do these but let me know in the comments down below what you're reading what you're listening to what you're doing um, I want to know so I have to go now but hit that subscribe button and give this video a like if you liked it and I'll see you guys next time. Hey. <laughs>